the truth about trading and the truth about most of the trades you're going to take is price is going to run from you. Price isn't going to give you an entry. About 99.99999% of the price action you look at is not going to actually be your setup. Quick disclaimer, uh, these videos are meant for educational purposes only. Anything said or shown in any of these videos are personal opinion and my perspective. A trading carries a high level of risk, so anything done is your responsibility. <laughs> Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome back to Ment FX and it's been a minute. I'm really happy to be back right now. Um, took a little bit of a break. You know, as you know, I'm, I haven't uploaded in a while or everything I've uploaded was recorded a while back. Um, my daughter's due very soon. She's actually due this month. Um, so it's August right now, August 14th today at the time of this recording, uh, just as market has just opened. No, it's opening in about an hour. So that's really cool to see. Um, and my daughter's due about August 31st. So I'm super stoked. I'm super excited. I can't wait. Um, we just had our private uh, mentorship today on Sunday. We have them every Sunday. You know, the, the group has been as active as ever. It's continued to grow and slowly it's become a very, it, it's become a very close knit community. You know, as new people come in, uh, they get the correct kind of treatment from a lot of people um, and they're, they're taking kind of the next level. And today during our webinar, uh, we spent a lot of time talking about the idea of structure and intermediary structure. Now, this concept is somewhat taught poorly, I believe, on, on YouTube. So I wanted to make a video about it, um, highlighting it. I do have a few things written out here. Don't worry about them too much. You know, it's not it's not worth trying to confuse yourself um, just because, you know, I wrote some stuff out. But we do need to start at a at an understanding of how to judge structure based on the time frames you're on. And on top of that, and again, this is going to work across all time frames. On top of that, understand what intermediary structure means and how it works. So very quickly, as we always do, as we have from the beginning, I'm going to start with a paint. I'm going to show something to you guys. Okay, so let's envision a market on, on any time frame. It doesn't really matter. Um, it comes down, right? Whatever. It's, it's in a let's actually not bullshit around. Right. We all know that markets don't move like people like to say they do right this is what people like to think markets move like this is not the case so let's start uh, somewhere where we can look at the at the movement of the market from a from a lens of what it actually moves like and how we then can confirm use ranges reconfirm those ranges within the realm of this three box scenario three box setup as i like to teach on this channel so as we know markets move a little something like this we're going to envision a overall bearish market to start with or or a market that has been putting in bearish ranges so very quickly you know markets move something like this you get your breaks down you know they come up come down right maybe they play around like so you get something along the lines of this okay this is this is more so what markets uh tend to move like okay so this is this can be the start of a of a market as it begins to move and this is what i would consider an overall bearish market and as we follow this you're going to see normal structural highs and lows being put into the market right this is how you would kind of view this right here this is what the market would overall be viewed like from a from a standpoint of just normal structural moves coming in this is more so what markets tend to move like right and within this you're going to see the the normal three box scenario that i teach you guys to to look at here right so just to show you an example of the three box which is based in an impulse followed by an snd or an area where that impulse came from followed by the actual confirmation within that area and this can be flipped for the opposite side the way you're going to see that on the actual charts is you have an impulse creating a high aka a protected high in our book a low that's going to act as an actual um as the actual target of the given time frame then you're going to have the S and D within that, which is oftentimes going to be either mitigated or absorbed and then continue. Or sometimes it just won't come up. That's normal part of the game. And then within these areas on lower time frames, we're using the rule of 30 or using any of the entry criteria taught privately in the mentorship, like the double MB, the fractalized double MB, um, or any of, or the triple M or any of the other ones that a lot of you've been killing it on. And by the way, it's been an absolutely amazing week. You know, um, just the week before, as a lot of, you know, we had the beautiful EU move to the top side based off of that news. Now, again, I don't teach you guys to, to trade news, but we had a lot of our members position in longs here and down here. So when the news inevitably came and people had been properly positioned and moved to break even, um, um, we had a lot of members hit their first one, the 100s, one, the 90s. And you know what? I might I might upload a subsection of a webinar in the future video or maybe even in this video. We'll see probably in a future video. That said, though, 
we're aware of the fact that markets tend to deliver like so, okay? So this is more so what they deliver like. This is what the delivery looks like. And to pinpoint that delivery in the form of the three box, this is what it somewhat looks like, right? Then you have three boxes that form like so, you know, creating those moves and the new three boxes within them that make up larger three boxes, right? So this would be your your one impulse, you would have an SD either in here that might have gotten mitigated, maybe you took a loss off it, and, a, and an SD up here. That's where you're looking for the entry. You continue that entry through, and then maybe it moves. Or you get another three box on the bigger time frame, just like this, comes into the SD right there, and once again gets confirmed right there, right? So this is somewhat, or this is likely what price tends to move like. Again, go in your own charts and start testing this, start seeing it. Make sure you've checked out my other three box videos, but this isn't on average what price actually moves like and, and acts like. This is what I've taught forever. Um, and this is what I want you to mainly focus on. It's this three-step process. It's never changed. And it's based on S, S, C. So t stamp this, put it on your wrist, write it on your wrist and marker. Actually, don't do that because you might get skin cancer. So don't write it on your wrist, but write it somewhere, write it on your computer, set it as a background, whatever it might be, SSC. There's three steps to having a trade valid and a trade to th that can be traded, right? And then you can work with multiple fractals and you can add on rules for these to make them very, very potent, refined, whatever you might want to do. But the entire system is based on this three-step model. It's based on an impulse that creates a protected high or protected low for you, as well as a target. It's based on an S and D, which comes from an unmitigated portion in price across timeframes. And it comes from three, the confirmation there, which acts as either the weak to strong hands or the private concepts taught in the mentorship of the double MB, the double fractalized MB or any of the ones taught there. Now, an important reason as to why I'm teaching you this is because this is what the three box would look like in an overall bearish setting. Now, the problem a lot of traders have is they so this is this is something i teach in the private mentorship too you have the rule of left to right now the rule of left to right is one that forces you to start from the left hand side of the chart and work your way forward to the right hand side thereby allowing you to see what ranges you previously existed in so you can figure out the exact ranges you're in now these are normal structural points when you go from left to right you figure out the structure you were in and the structure you're in now. And when you see something like this, you're aware that the structure you're in now or the three box you're in now or the impulse you're in now is from this high to this low. And that's your first box showing you the impulse. And then you can go from there and find the unmitigated SND or switch timeframes, find the unmitigated SNDs and then confirm them here. And by the way, for any of you that have been completely killing it and are actively killing it, have you know started journaling, collecting your data, um, consider checking out the link above, menfunding.com. Great funding model, you know, read over it, make sure it fits your style and it'd be a pleasure to have you on, maybe have you on for a little interview later, whatever it is, you know, shoot me a message in Discord if you've been trading with men funding, uh, if you're in the in the private group and, you know, it'd be cool to have a little conversation with you, whatever it might be. Um, you know, don't know exactly what, what uh, direction I'm going to go with, with this channel, um, but you know, the, the education element is there. I'm going to probably create a little playlist for everyone. Um, so you guys know where the education is. Of course, if you want to go deeper, you got the link down below. Um, and then if you want to surround yourself with a community of people, you know, on your level, above your level, you know, significantly above your level, that's where you have that. And you can scrape tons of months or years off of your learning curve, potentially, especially when you have access to people like that. However, that said, you have the rule of going from left to right. And in the rule of going left to right, you know, you're going to you're going to be able to spot the scenarios you've been in or the tr structures you've been in, the new structures that have come as a result of that. And when you pinpoint these, so let's pinpoint this as the protected high and this is the protected low. What you're also going to do is you're going to be able to understand where intermediary structure comes from. So there's normal structure, which is viewed more so from the lens of this. And this is how you get positioned with an overall bearish market. But there's also the intermediary structure. And that's a structure that happens within a range. And that's going to look like this, right? Oftentimes it can do anything, come up and just come down. And that's great. That's, you know, the three box playing out perfectly. Or you can have something that stays here for a while. You know, we've had this happen a few times with the EU, I believe like a week back or a month back. And this could happen for a while. Now, this isn't a big deal, but the problem with not understanding the idea of left to right and the idea of normal structure versus intermediary structure is that you're going to confuse yourself if you start from right to left. And what that means is if you go from right to left in this overall market, you're going to instantly see this break a structure and assume that this is your three box or this is your impulse that you're going to now trade to take to the top side, right? Similarly, if you do that, if you had gotten onto this market at any time, you know, from here, you would have been looking to long here. Then you would have been looking to long here. Then you would have been looking to short here. 
and then you're going to be looking to short here then you're going to be looking to short here then you're going to be looking to long here and to long here and then to short here and you can see how we start to get so many zones back and forth and back and forth without an actual understanding of where price may want to head as an actual target right we we then forget that the range we've already been in which is from this high to this low has already set the precedent of this being the overall liquidity low we want to aim for as part of the three box system that then could if it wanted to of course continue and continue and continue which is what we actually do as smart money traders right our job is to get positioned using the three box get positioned with the smart money on the weak to strong hand transfer and allow those trades to play out right hence why as i show you examples like this one right here from people in the mentorship people that position themselves on the three boxes in here and just to just to showcase an example of this for you guys you know people that have positioned themselves in this break to the top side and entry off the s and d here right so here you have box number one box number two box number three we had a ton of members get positioned inside of here on the weak to strong hand we also had members get positioned in here i'm not going to break that down right now and as the news dropped around here when they were already in decent profit and partials had been made and they were at break even regardless of the news if it was good bad whatever it did to the price didn't matter all it did for them is in this case ended up being a huge payoff and as it came up and started liquidating the actual higher time frame highs again based on the higher time from three box strategies that's where they get to partial and secure their profits and as a result we're able to some members secure their first one 100s one to 90s and again as i say that they're not securing 100 rr or 100 percent they're securing an overall move that did make a move to 100 rr that they partialed throughout most likely uh, you know almost most definitely but there's an understanding as to how they achieve those and on you know on top of that i've seen a lot of the comments from you guys in the videos uh recently in the comments where a lot of you are starting to understand how higher r is a very much plausible and normal thing but you know unless you have an understanding that you have worked on that you have molded that you have built over time especially with the content i share here you know it's hard to understand how something like this is very much possible and in honesty easier to do than a lot of people think right it's a question of understanding what a three box looks like a good three box looks like right a lot of testing goes into it getting involved on it with the understanding that if it's with the smart money it's going to move if it's not we're going to manage our position as we need to to be at the break even or to just take that normal break even and then as price delivers if it wants to it can go as far as it fucking wants or not as far as it wants right it doesn't matter because at the end of the day that's the move we're making money on or we're making small some money on and then it's coming back to break even right some of my trades you can see them through the week here i broke down most of them in the most recent webinar uh, so that would be webinar 64 for anyone that's looking to join and wants a real breakdown took a break even in a plus five here a break even in a plus five here a plus five here and a plus five here and that was my entire week and none of the moves i actually took were moves that capitalized on a huge move in the market a huge move in the market a huge move in the, well this one was a huge move in the market but it, this was a buy right here i was actually looking to take out this high and that failed but despite failing and being wrong about the next liquidation i was still able to secure actually a profit on this and had a really great week as a result i've actually had some of my best weeks still over the last month or two um so it's been absolutely crazy but that said that's just part of the game you know sometimes you're gonna have really good weeks sometimes you're gonna have really good months sometimes you're gonna have decent or bad months um you know it's just that's just part of the game but that said right a big portion of the awareness about what you're doing comes from this right here which is that if you learn to think from left to right you can follow the ranges you're in and then be aware of the range that you're most likely going to continue in right so I'll show you an example of that in a second maybe if i can remember where that was but then you also have the intermediary ranges and this is where a lot of people go wrong right i've seen a lot of people go wrong here that's why i wanted to make this video what they do is after this range has been decided upon right so here you know here's your range that has been decided upon from let's assume this high to this low once that range is decided upon at, at that point you know you should just have your alert set here and that's really it you shouldn't really need to do anything else that's like step one if you're trying to learn the three box system or trying to learn to think this way and most of the time price will not come all the way back up here if anything it'll come down and make a new range it's perfectly normal it's perfectly fine but and that and that's going from left to right the mistake a lot of people make is that as this range begins to play out maybe even play out over time and then they see this they start assuming this is a bullish range that they can now trade and as price comes up that's still the bullish range they trade right and they're starting to forget the range that they're actually in so this is what we call an intermediary range right here let's make that purple for you guys because it's going to fit into what i'm about to show you so here's the purple ranges 
right? And these are all intermediary, non ranges that you should not be technically trading unless you've already made money and already are profitable trading the normal three box system. So what happens is at this point, people don't even consider their potential shorts from here because at this point they're seeing this long and they're saying, okay, this is my most recent impulse, my most recent range, that's the one I have to trade. And as price then comes down, right? Maybe it creates a Wyckoff right here as part of box one, box two, box three. They're looking to long this and as they long it, their long start getting taken over and the smart money follows through on the move that it's that it's looking at, right? And I'm sure a lot of you have already experienced this mistake and had this issue occur to yourself multiple times because I made the same mistake. I've seen people make the mistake. I see people make the mistake day in, day out. And I'm going to try and pinpoint that mistake for you so you can increase your bottom line um, before you start you know, considering trading actual intermediary structure ranges. And this is an intermediary range. Why? Because it's a range created Right, so there's still a break of structure and all that stuff, but it's a range created within an already preset range, right? Because if you're going from left to right, so the rule of left to right is that you wanna start with the ranges on the left, follow them through to tell yourself the story, something I talk about a lot, about what, what range we're actually in now. And as you do that, you begin to spot the range you're in so you don't get confused by all these ranges in here. And instead of then trying to long this range and this range and then short this range and then short this range and then short this range and this range, you're aware of the range you're in on that specific time frame and can work within the realm of that for the three box system. And you're not taking random losses of zones like this when you don't even understand why that's happening. And the reason I tell you about all this is because even though you can trade intermediary ranges and make a ton of money trading them, if you're not already profitable with a normal three box, you're going to you're going to um, you're going to build the confusion. You're, you're going to put momentum to the confusion that you already have. And what's going to happen is if you're trading these now without understanding the previous normal three box, what's going to occur is you're going to start having a lot more zones that fail, a lot more zones that you know, don't hold a lot more structural ranges that don't play out. And you're going to start doubting yourself, your system, not understanding what's going on. Right. And that all stems from the fact that you're not starting at, at step one, which is make yourself aware of the range you're in and follow that range forward. Right. So here's an example. I'm going to show you two trades today. Uh, not today that I took last week that I went over today with my, with my team. Um, one was a perfect one that that met all my rules perfectly and it was actually just a super super simple and clean setup and another one which is a little bit more intense a little bit more crazy a little bit more all over the place dealing with this intermediary stuff and i'm going to show you why it's so important to consider this idea of ranges so as we're now aware okay i'm going to delete all this as we're now aware we can exist we always exist on any time frame with two structural ranges that are always happening. One is the red range, which is defined as the actual structure. And two is the purple range, which is defined as the intermediary structure, which usually ends up liquidating and tricking a lot of traders to put simply. Okay, so let's start from the left to right here, right? We come from an extremely bullish market, right? This was just after the news. And then after news, it's fine to trade because you know, the market regains its liquidity, starts moving normal again, and it's perfectly fine but regains its normal moves. So let's start this in a red, okay? So the price comes up, breaks a high, all good, breaks a new high. So we have a new high coming from this low. We have a low and we have a high, and now we have a structural range in motion. This is our first box. Now, again, are we going to trade off this box? No. Why? Because it's an already very bullish market that's continuing to be bullish. So unless we confirm and then reconfirm, we don't want to be trading this. We want to see a disruption in price because we're aware of how price moves. Either price is going in one direction and creating, you know, clean up moves until we get a real displacement, at which point we can now trade the start of the new trend because at the start or the end of any trend, again, if you if you study multiple trends that have occurred in history, any you know, open up a chart and just follow the structure, you will find that the best setups usually happen on the first, second, or third structural shift within a um, within a market, right? So write that down somewhere. So if you go to any market and find a bullish market and notate the high and the low, and then wait for a break, the best setups will come from either this break, and then you have, you know, your three box setup and you take it way lower, or it breaks down, right? It breaks down, pulls back, maybe breaks down again, you know, then gives you the three box right here. And then that's the beautiful trade, or maybe it keeps going, right? Breaks down, comes up, breaks down, comes up, comes up, maybe doesn't even reach it, right? Boom, breaks down, and then gives you one more three box setup right here before making the either immense move that just completely liquidates all these higher time from structures, or, you know, maybe takes this out and then comes right back up. And now you're in a new structural range. If you follow 
and, and work with a lot of structures and just go and, and notice what happens. Go and add this to your journal, right? You know, this is all your own choice, whether or not you want to go and test this. Go and look at it in your journals. Find, find, find on any time frame. Again, I'm on a one minute here, but it doesn't matter because I, I mainly trade the one minute, as you know, and then I confirm uh, all the way down to the one second is my main trading strategy. But f find any ranges that have started out rather bullish and wait for this. And then notice how on the first or on the second or on the third impulse or third creation or third box, right? Whatever it might be, you get the actual three box system, which gives you that opportunity to potentially enter based on your confirmation, right? Notice how that occurs. And then, you know, this is, this is how you start pinpointing and then everything else just follows this, right? So if you watch like my session sauce video, if you're using these, you know, very liquid points in time, like the, like, like, um, New York or London on EU, well, then, you know, that during London, you're either, you're going to have one of two things, either the London move is going to stop and give you a really clean entry right to the three boxes, the top side. And then maybe you can follow that through, or it's going to subside and, and basically displace below. If you haven't seen my video on displacement, make sure you've seen it displays below a certain already bullish set trend. And again, you'll either get it on, you know, the first three box, you might get it on the second three box right here or the third three box, maybe not even there, maybe. And sometimes you can get multiple, maybe it comes down, gives you another entry here and then goes right. And again, as we zoom out, this is what markets tend to look like. Go look at any um, injection of liquidity into the market. So, you know, that would be New York or London session for like EU and notice how these moves or when these moves come into play and how they come into play. These are the entries you're looking for on the three box. That's the footprint you're, you're following. That's how you keep following new footprints that are put forward. However, you're also aware of this left to right idea. And as a result, you're not going to get caught out on the intermediary structure. So now let me show you an example of a personal trade. I took I came in, this is around 8 30 AM right here, right? My actual trade was around that 9 AM. So I got our Allen around here, but I'm going to show you this from this standpoint, because I come on and I study the left to right. So I came onto the market around this time right here, 9 AM. And what am I going to do instead of going right into it and just saying, okay, where am I? This is, this is what tunnel vision looks like. A lot of people will come on and they'll wait, right? They don't know what's going on yet. They'll wait. And then they'll see this break here and they'll go, okay, I got a break to the top side. So that means I have a low a high and I need to buy this market. Okay. But that's not based in anything. Okay. There's, there's nothing here. This is intermediary structure. Instead, when I come on at nine, I go left to right. I ask myself, where have I been? And now as a result of where I've been, where am I going? So once again, we come into the session, right? And we look left and we figure out we had this pullback, this breakup. Okay, great. We had a range there. We're in a bullish range. We're in a bullish market. We're in a bullish market condition. This is true for all time frames. We have a pullback. We have a break. Okay. We're in a bullish market condition. We're breaking to the top side. Phenomenal. We have a low to a high established. We know it's bullish. Now, what do we see about price? Price has broken that low to the downside. And where did that come from? Well, I teach it on based on a based on a candlestick rule of absorption, um, which I teach in my private mentorship. I don't go over it much here, but nonetheless, it's just a displacement above a previous high. What that shows you is smart money coming in, liquidating a certain high, holding price above that before coming right back down. This for me is an example of manipulation or where the where that manipulation came from in the form of where we're going to mitigate in the future. Now, once again, as I teach you to think about SNDs in the form of volume, even though this is true, we can play around with a few timeframes to see if there's a better zone. So now we're aware that we exist from this, first of all, from this high to this low. So we're aware now from going from left to right that we have made our first breakdown of a bullish range to the downside, and it's come from the SND right here. Notice now that just this one step of allowing yourself to go from left to right to figure out the range you're in has already saved you money and actually potentially given you a good setup from someone that might have just looked at this and said, there's a bullish break here. And now I want to trade it to the top side or there's a bearish break here. Now I want to trade to the downside, right? Or as this breaks down bearish going, there's a bullish break here. I need to trade this upside. There's a bullish break here. I need to trade this to the upside because these would all now count and act as intermediary structures as intermediary structures. So when this was developed again, I'm not going to break this down too much, but you have a high which is going to act as your protected high to your low, which is going to act as your liquidity and is going to act and function as the three box scenario right here. You have impulse one, you have the S and D two, and you want to confirm it was S and D, uh, with the, with the confirmation, which is the box three. At this point, I dropped down to the 32nd 
Uh, let me go find my, my setup really quick for you guys. There it is. Right, so we're aware of the structures we're now involved in and the ones we're inside of. Um, at this point, I actually did use this up move before the down move. You can see that's where it came from. This is a bug on trading view. I don't know how it occurs, but it does sometimes. Um, during the market, this actually did get tapped in. I don't know why that happened, but it is what it is. You know, broker broker mispricing, whatever it might be. Nonetheless, price had tapped in during this time. So of course I was, I was active and watching it and looking to trade it. We have our three box and we have our zone here. And now notice how, because we're drawing this out and we're thinking from the standpoint of left to right, we're not getting confused by all these random ranges inside. Instead, we're allowing them to form for us. So now we go to the five second. That's usually my confirmation. And then I have one more confirmation on the on the five second. I'm not gonna break this down too much, but here you have it right here. As we follow this price coming into it, I'm gonna draw this a little bit bigger. So, you know, you can see what I saw during the actual market. Price taps in. Once again, it makes a high in this. Oh, this is a, let's go back to a five second. There we go. Yep. So this was a high in the market, right? Again, go from left to right, follow the red. We have a low. We have a break to the high, we have a low, we have a break to the high, then we have a break down. Now, why is it so important that we're going from left to right? Because notice, as we see this break, we see a low that gets put in and a high right here. That's a three box setup forming, right? Here's impulse, here's your S&D, here's your reconfirmation. That's exactly what you see here. That's what I was reconfirming. Now, notice if you are an intermediary trader, so let's make this like purple to showcase this. Let's call this the intermediary line. A lot of you already might have began to get very confused. Now, again, I know this is a five second, but you can do this with anything. If your one minute was a one hour or a daily, this could be like a five minute or a 15 minute or 30 minute chart, right? Depending on what you're using. A lot of you would be looking at this already going, here's my breakdown. I need to trade this zone, right? And then as that zone fails, you're already looking at this break or this break as a bullish break. And already you're thinking, okay, wait, the, the market was bearish but it's giving me bullish place from here. So I need to go bullish from here. And then you start seeing it go bullish. So you're starting to get involved there. But the reality is you're looking at intermediary structural breaks because you're failing to go from left to right and pinpoint the range that you are already in by working backwards from the ranges you were in, right? This is the idea of left to right. You need to learn to think left to right, left to right. So price comes up into the zone. I do my one second double MB confirmation as per the mentorship or on a lower time frame, you might be able to go and spot the Wyckoff if you go and study my other videos and took the entry down into it, managed as per the management tactic I teach you guys and my um, use my strategy or use the strategy. I forgot what it was called. I think it's use my strategy and took that down. And then it came back up to break even after my first partial. Didn't reach my second. I had a second partial set around one to 25. Um, it came rather close from what I remember. I think it came right back down, but then didn't reach it. So we can take a quick look at that. Believe it came back down a little bit further, but then never reached it. Yep, so it came just short of it. Um, you know, <laughs> it's part of the game about, yeah, so 0 0.8 pips from hitting my second partial. It's part of the game, it's very normal. Um, I do this all the time, so I, I'm, I'm used to it and I'm okay with this. I'm not gonna close emotionally on it because there's no point. You're just gonna lose money if you do. Um, and then price came back to break even and that was a great trade. However, notice that it was based on just following this three box, but also was 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 worked around by following the the understanding of intermediary not affecting the higher. Now, as you develop, you can actually reintroduce following intermediary structure into your um, into your trade plan. However, you should never consider doing it if you're not already profitable trading the normal way. Because like I said, you're gonna confuse yourself in your own um, understanding, okay? So once again, um, this is actually, so I broke this down during the private mentorship today, but I'm gonna break down a version of it for you guys today as well. Um, so last week, same thing. We came into my general session, which is around 9 a.m., so around here, and it was a bullish market, right? Clearly, it was a bullish market moving bullish that broke down bearish for a second right here from, from this high to this low, then re-broke bullish right here. So we put in a bullish market right there. Run sec. All right, sorry about that, guys. Had to take a little pause. Was checking out some stuff in the, in the backyard, building out another room um, in the house. So I have a personal smaller office. Um, but let's continue. So basically, you know, coming into the market this day, we broke down bearish again. I came on around here, but I'm going left to right. This is this rule. Remember it. You want to go left to right to figure out where you've been, to figure out where you're going and what the price has been doing. You're forming a story, right? Not everything needs to be, not everything is just as simple as 
got my thing let's let's make it happen right you need to be aware of the story of the context of the trade of the context of the market whatever the market has been doing for a while right this is why it's important and this is why a lot of successful traders at all times talk about the importance of how much time they spent doing something and how that time allowed basically for experience to occur because guess what experience does it formulates confidence because when you start experiencing something over and over and over again you your brain starts to be able to recognize that pattern on repeat and when that occurs you begin to see the same thing day in day out so once again these green dots are denoting normal structure to you and we had this break up so once again i got on around 9 a.m which was around here and that's when i saw this guy right here and that's actually what i aimed to buy into so you can see i was looking to follow this buy up as part of box one right so here's box one very simple box two and i look to confirm this for box three to come and take out this high as well as take out this high which was a higher time frame contextual story made up of a higher range so during that time, let's go back here a little bit. During that time, as you can see right here, I tried to actually confirm it and take it long. You can see I followed it up a little bit. Um, I started taking up the three boxes, right? We had a break one, started to follow this up, tried to follow it from here, never gave me a setup, broke up again, tried to follow it from here, started following it inside of here for the three boxes of the top side, just never got a setup and it just ran without me, okay? That's part of the game. Notice how I'm not sitting here stressing over the fact that my three boxes aren't holding, my three boxes aren't working. The setup that I'm looking for or the confirmation that I'm looking for is running away from me. The truth about trading and the truth about most of the trades you're going to take is price is going to run from you. Price isn't going to give you an entry. About 99.99999% of the price action you look at is not going to actually be your setup. There's going to be a ton of setups there that you know you might have studied before or looked at or an entry confirmation would have worked, but the hard part of being a trader or the hard part of being a trader, the emotional part of being a trader is recognizing that the edge you have tested and experienced is an edge within its right aka when the setup happens and when there's an actual tap into your zone or your your area or the setup gives you a confirmation that is when your edge is taking effect that is when you're either going to take the loss take the win or take the break even and regardless of the outcome you're aware and happy that you followed the process right because following the process is trading trading isn't making money i mean trading is making money but trading isn't being in a trade 24 7 right trading is about figuring out what your setup is what your edge is and following through with that edge and allowing prices that don't give you setups that run without you that run for a week without you that run for a month without you that don't give you a setup for a month that give you losses during the entire month to be a part of your strategy and to allow that to be normalized and continue trading it Something I spoke about recently in webinar 63 and 62, if you're in the private mentorship and you're listening to this, is the idea of all-time highs. I really suggest that you listen to that if you are part of the private mentorship, but the, the quick rundown is that there is no system in the world that can consistently put in all-time highs for your, um, for your trading. And if there is, it's probably going to come and liquidate or, or lose big over time. This is exactly how and why a lot of hedge funds fail. A lot of people that have a lot of money fail. This is how hedge funds go out of business, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're usually, you know, hyped on this, on this high win rate, small little profits, 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 profits. So people get happy. They invest their money with them. And over time, seven, eight, 10 years down the line, there's a full on liquidation of that because the strategy is based in a very high win rate system, but not based in anything that actually has edge. This is why you have a lot of people that can sell a signal service and sell signal services because what happens is once people join during this month and they experience this for the next few months, they're very, very happy. And if anyone joins during any of these months, they're very happy because the signal service is working. Again, you should never be following a signal service. If you're after signal services in this industry, you will lose long-term and you will not be a profitable trader. Nonetheless, this is when people join the signal services and when they get liquidated, this is the month where they go, fuck, my signal provider actually sucks. I shouldn't have done this. However, the signal provider is going to keep doing his thing. And once again, you're going to have people joining that love the results they're getting with their 90% win rates and the normal 10% loss rate is going to come in. But because of the RR of the system, it's going to be nonstop liquidations of this happening over time. This is how signal providers excel at what they do. Now, I'm not saying all signal providers are bad. There's many signal providers that might be actually really good. I don't know personally. I don't follow signals. Following signals will not get you anywhere. I have not met any profitable people in the world, profitable traders that I've spoken to that have looked at me and said, wait, I actually don't trade my own capital. I just follow this guy's signals. It doesn't happen. It doesn't exist. 
If you want that to be the case, take your money and give it to a financial planner, financial advisor, and let them invest it over the next 50, 60 years um, at one of the bigger, bigger firms that you know have consistently proven that they can do that for you. Otherwise, you shouldn't be in the industry looking for signals. That's not how you become a trader. You're never gonna be a trader. If you're looking for that earn and learn model, you're not gonna make money trading at all. You need to learn how to do this from the bottom up. You need to learn and you need to not basically win any money until you have the skill fully fledged out and fully understood. Otherwise, you're going to keep yourself stuck in this model for a much longer portion of your life until you either A, quit or B, change your ways. So if you're one of those people right now that are, you know, considering maybe trying out the, the, th this side of things where you're like copy trading, give me my signals, reconsider it, make the choice now to either not do it or to quit right now. Because the reality of this entire industry is, of this entire industry is you either do it for yourself or you don't do it at all. All right. So once again, back to it, you know, so, no, so don't follow signals. It's not going to, it's not going to help you. But once again, I try to follow some, some moves up in here. Never happened. Part of a system. I'm going to keep stressing this in many of my videos going forward because I've taught everything I really need to teach um, somewhat technical wise. A lot of the technical is available and the, the real depth of technical is only in my private mentorship. So I'm going to stress a lot of the psychological things now or talk with a lot of the men funding members that have, you know, succeeded, done very well, or even my own members, just, you know, if, if they end up wanting to, because a lot of people, when they find profitability, don't actually want to be in the public's eye. But this said, be aware that just because you know about the three box or you know about the fib retracement level or you know about the new next harmonic or you know about the trend line scenario that creates profitability, just because you know about it doesn't mean that when you have it marked up on your chart, it's going to work. It's not how trading works. Trading works because you understand an edge and you understand how that edge functions. And when the setup is present, that's when the edge takes effect. Okay. So just keep that in mind going forward. Now, back to this. I started to follow this up. Never followed through, never worked. But notice we are still working from the left to the right, the, from the left to the right. And this is what I spoke about with my, with my mentorship today. We're, we're in a bullish market. We were in a bullish market. This was August 9th. Price comes up, makes that range. I started to confirm it up, never gave me confirmations. Came up and didn't break the structure. I mean, for some people, this is a break of structure. I personally use candles because um, for me, it just shows displacement. It shows continuation. Um, so for me, it's not a, um, what's it called? It's not a break of structure, but it is an absorption for me. So I teach the concept of absorption in my private mentorship for anyone that's not in there um, to, to basically give you a, a little synopsis. It's just a wick above or below a zone or an SND. Um, and not a, not a follow through or displacement. And it shows you liquidation, right? That's exactly what it's showing you. Cause it's showing you that above this price, um, not only do buyers of the composite man not want to push that market through it. Instead, they want to absorb whatever's above there. And in this case, maybe even snap back. So this is the only time where you can start to take small little diverging ideas away from this intermediary structure thing. Because remember, you shouldn't be trading intermediary structure if you don't already, or aren't already profitable with normal structure. So in this case, you have an absorption of this high, then you begin to break down and we break down further. Notice how we have this break right here, this intermediary break, and I didn't follow it. If you did, you know, you could have followed it and it was actually a fine trade. It gave you some setups here potentially and then ran. However, for me, because I'm aware that intermediary structure, which is this right here, which is not based on the left to right rule, because I'm aware that it's intermediary structure, I'm also aware that it's most likely to fail, not hold, get liquidated, or any, or or you know, not even set up at all. So when I take an intermediary structure break as a setup, I need to be really sure and understand the context of the trade. And in this case, what we're having is we're having an overall absorption of an overall bullish range that has been bullish, the failure to push through it and absorbing of that high. And at the same time, we've already broken down with one intermediary range and are now making a secondary intermediary break right here. So as I told you guys earlier in this video, and this is why it's so, it's it's very cool for a lot of you that actually sit here and watch my videos. I know it's a lot. I know I say a lot, but for you that sit here, you will be getting clicks left and right and you will start understanding these ideas and you're gonna start to be able to put them in your own trading if you're here consistently listening to me because we had that one break. And as we know, when there's a market and it's going in any direction, 
on the one, second, or third break, you're usually gonna get a pretty nice three box system entry. So even within the intermediary sphere, when we come and absorb this and we get one break and I still don't follow it because I'm not sure if this is what it wants to do. And then we get a second break that follows through very cleanly on the intermediary side and leaves behind a very clean supply zone. That's when I'm willing to play a three box system within an intermediary structure. So there's two main things that I want you to take away from this video, okay? One is that if you're not already profitable, you do not want to worry or think about intermediary structure. What you need to be aware about concerning intermediary structure is to not use it. You need to be aware of the left to right rule. You go from left of the screen to the right and figure out the ranges you've been in and the ranges you are in. Because what it's going to show you is where the most in, the, the most recent actual displacement or impulse in price has occurred and what the most likely um, consequence or or what the most likely, what do you call it? Conclusion of that price is gonna be, and it's gonna be true on all time frames. If the most recent break has been to the bearish side, it's most likely gonna retain its bearish move, right? So as you all know, here it goes again, MentFX. I have been bearish on EU for the last, ever since right here. So for the last 332 days, for the most part, I've been extremely bearish on EU with my with my team, with my mentorship, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, that doesn't mean we can't take longs, but we've been extremely bearish. If we follow from left to right, not right to left. So a lot of people are already making this mistake right here. They're looking at this going, here's my break in structure. I need to long this area here. Now, again, it might work. This is not about talking about whether it works or not. Intermediary structures can work. I even trade them myself. I just showed you an example of an intermediary structure break. However, you will confuse yourself when this price either does this and then goes long or just keeps going long and doesn't give you an entry because you're not aware of why intermediary structures can be sometimes used. So if we go from left to right and figure out where we were in this market, okay? And as you know, as we recalled, we, we looked to sell this, showed you guys the video from the mentorship way before I way before this price action ever happened, showed you how as it, how we were looking to sell in here, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is all documented for you publicly and privately. And I showed you guys privately when this was documented way before it happened. You don't have to believe me. I don't care. It's not my place. Money you make or lose in this market is your own. Everything I teach is under a simulated environment, perspective-based only. So all you have to do is look at what I'm saying and go and study and prorate it to your charts and see if it works or not. It's not up to me to show you anything. It's up to you to decide if it's something you wanna pursue. This is an independent industry, an industry where you succeed when you choose to pursue it independently. You're not here to play with other people, to compete with other people. You can bounce ideas off other people, that's fine. But at the end of the day, you are solely responsible for everything you do in the markets. So act at it. So act act that way, right? It's very easy when I go through some of my comments, um, when I can tell someone is really on the path to, you know, gaining consistency and profitability themselves or someone that's going to stay stuck probably forever. It's very easy to spot it. Nonetheless, we've been very bearish on this. And if we keep following it from left to right, right? We were looking at this double break here. So this was a fine zone to take. This was based on a three day, I believe, or a six day chart. Um, we looked at it down off the S&D here, three box strategy, kept taking it down. Let's go left to right. Breaks a new low. Where does that come from? Here's the low, here's the high. That's where it comes from. That's it. If you're new, this is the only model you want to work with. That's it. This is the only model you want to work with. If it gets here and gives you the confirmation, you're good to go. Then it can either keep going and give you a huge profit on that, maybe get you a break even, or give you some profit before it continues and maybe breaks or disrupts a range. However, you don't want to start working on all the intermediary structure breaks here if you don't understand how to use them yet. Because what that means, right? Remember what an intermediary structure means. It means it's going to fail more. The zones are not going to hold as much. The zones are going to get absorbed or traded through before continuing in a given direction. And you're going to have the same issues that you've had for a while, AKA none of my zones are holding. None of my structure ranges are holding. I don't know what's going on. I'm always on the wrong side. Well, it comes from this fact, right? Right now you have most people longing EU. Now, again, it might be right. Like, right. If we go into here, community outlook, if we go into here, right? Yeah. You're going to see it. You have a a majority of retail already again long on EU. Now again, this isn't to say that EU won't go long, but it's most likely going to remain short because it's been proving to us it's going to remain short and for the last year, as per our following, it's been very short. So, what these moves in here do, these intermediary intermediary bullish ranges do, is they start getting people hyped up on this bullish side and they want to start getting very very long in this market. And once again, they're going to start getting 
in long with their stops here, 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 but mostly what do we know? Here. And as a result, the already preset red structure, the non-intermediary structure, the normal structure is going to end up being the reason they get liquidated. And once again, we'll probably get confused by why price is doing this. Now, again, hopefully once again, I'm wrong about this. I, I, I never know where price is actually going to head. All I know is what edge I have in the market with what criteria for entry and how to execute upon that when the entry is clear. And when it executes, it can either run to 3000 pips in profit or 30 pips in profit or no pips in profit. And I'm gonna be aware of how that edge over time is going to accumulate capital. But notice how this range that has been preset and is already set here now is the one acting with this as the target, as long as this this high holds with either a wick. Yeah, so as long as it's a wick, as long as this high holds with, with a with a wick or whatever, even if there's a wick this big, as long as there, the, the candle body doesn't come above here, this is showing you major absorption or major downside pressure. And right now, I'd be looking to continue the short side. This is what I've been doing forever with my mentorship. I think market just opened. Yeah, it did. Cool, cool, cool. Very nice. So these intermediary breaks to the top side are already starting this process of once again, manipulating whatever you want to call them people thinkers hedge funds um banks whatever anyone whatever the fuck again remember not everyone's looking at candlesticks it's not about the candlesticks it's about the move of the price when you view this on dom or or order books or whatever it is you're going to see the same orders you're just going to be represented differently don't confuse the fact that you know candlesticks are used the end all be all by you know the the toughest end of smart money it's not normally the case if anything the highest end of smart money don't even like care about the price they just they have access not even order books right they just have access to information and as a result they're getting involved with the information they might be talking to market makers the market makers are most likely the ones creating a lot of these kind of moves and these are not based again on candlesticks they can be based on any form of indicators order books dom whatever the fuck you want to you want to think but the way you get people to become liquidity, the way you introduce more money into the market is by creating certain moves that allow people to believe a certain thing about price or to forget if they're following a set parameter or rule where they are in price, which is why I teach you guys to think from left to right, go left to right, figure out where you are and figure out what the most likely next move of the market is going to be. So as a result, I'm still overall short on this market, right? That is how I formulate my bias week in, week out. So be aware of that. That's where it comes from. So right now, as these break long, there's a lot of people that want to get long. But again, most likely, what's the most likely move of this? Ask yourself. Ask yourself this every single week because it's going to be the thing that separates you. And go and study it in 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 past moves because that's what draws profit. That, that, that's, that's, that's what creates consistency and success. And at the same time, if you have now created that success for yourself or that consistency and you are starting to see real consistency for yourself... Ooh, my voice I've, I've done way too much I had a I had a webinar earlier today so I spoke for like two and a half hours and now this and this is going this is going pretty long too so I want to cut it up but if you're consistent and doing amazing check out menfunding.com with the link above otherwise if you want to grow with the community if you want to have access to me talk with our community you know shoot the shit drop psychological bombs um, <laughs> introduce really cool books go through content back to us with us whatever it might be check out the link below that's available for you too and nonetheless Leave a like, a dislike, whatever you feel like. Leave a comment. I always appreciate your comments, guys. It means a shit ton to me to be able to read them. Um, I'm extremely excited to have my my child. I might be uploading a lot less, but hopefully this video, you know, stands the test of time and you guys enjoyed it personally. Once again, thank you all very much. And this is Papa Ment.